Hello, welcome back to another On Command Insight reporting series vignette. And today we're going to walk through the predefined dashboards and reports in On Command Insight 7.1. My name is Don Bork. I'm joined today by Mr. Ketsia Fa. Hello, everyone. And let's get this started, shall we? So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, some of the canned reports that come with On Command Insight, right? The, the ones that ship with the product that are out of the box. Mm -hmm. And then, we'll Ketsia, I think I'll turn it over to you. We'll get through this quickly for everyone, and hopefully it'll be educational for them. Yeah, so we had 27 reports. We're not going to show all 27, of course, but um, we're just going to show some of the uh, primary ones. So one one we were start with was the OCI scorecard. So this is going to show you all your assets in your environment, how much you're managing, uh, what what risks you have, and how healthy your environment is in terms of OCI, if you have everything configured correctly, if you have everything identified correctly, and so forth. So under the asset management section here, you'll see that everything's segregated by columns, um, you're going to see how many devices you discovered, how many servers, how many arrays, how many hosts, how many LUNs or volumes have you discovered, how many licensed switch ports do you have, or how many are still unlicensed. And this is at a global level, right? Exactly. So all of our servers report in to the data warehouse, and this is consolidating all of that information in one report. Yep, exactly. So globally, you also see what data sets you have in data as well. This is the this, this doesn't have to do with annotating the actual arrays itself, just what you've discovered or what you've created in terms of data center, tenant line business, and so forth, right? And then taking a look at the capacity management side, this is talking about your capacity, so you can figure out what you have today and how much you've used so far. Uh, that's typically the answer you want to uh, take a look at as soon as you take a look at this report. Um, risk management, this will tell you stuff about orphan capacity. This is by configuration, so taking a look at your LUNs, uh, what you have masked or masked and mapped, but not zoned, masked but not mapped, and so forth, right? Taking a look at violations, so these are all the violations depending on what uh, you've set up inside OCI, so, uh, so stuff like uh, blocked host or missing redundancies and so forth. We also even call this redundancy here, where we're looking at um, hosts that have more than one um, HPA connected to it. So this is actually calling out areas where we can right size or reclaim some of that waste in our environment, right? Yep. Excellent. And then down in, in the mitigation summary for risk, we're looking at um, pools that are becoming overutilized or ones that are completely over-provisioned or over-committed, right? Well, it's taking a look at the data source side and talking about thin and thin as well. And then for the health management, this is more of a OCI health environment. Uh, we want to make sure that everything is collecting correctly so that we have the other columns showing uh, complete and accurate data. And this uh, is the health of the OCI server exactly, and where it's collecting exactly. itself. Exactly. So if we're looking at orphan by configuration, we want to make sure that our path coverage is complete. Uh, we don't want to make sure, uh, because of a missing switch, that it's going to report com incomplete data, right? We're going to get inaccuracies for orphan. We're going to show this to management, and they're going to be like, why is this number so high? That's possibly because our path coverage was very low. So we want a complete understanding of the environment. That way we can fully report back on some of this waste or these opportunities to right size or reclaim stuff. Exactly. All right. All right. So moving on to the next dashboard, this is going to show you all the arrays within your environment uh, globally again. This is going to break it down by data center. We can then show um, by data center what arrays we have, whether they are virtualizers or backend or standalones like we have here. Uh, we're going to then show the capacity metrics associated with here. But at the very um, far right, you'll see the microcode version, so we can talk about compliance as well as the serial numbers here. And we break this down in SAN and NAS. Exactly. So we can tell how much has been allocated. This is a little misleading, but um, this is showing you how much has been allocated to FlexWalls, that would be NAS, and then how much has been allocated to LUNs, so that'll be the SAN side. All right, and that flex balls are also in, within the product called internal volume, same thing. Exactly. So you can also do a show for glossary to see a data dictionary as well. Oh, that's that's going to be at the very top. Very, very helpful. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we're taking a look at the application service level capacity and performance. Uh, this is if you 
of course, annotating your environment with applications, this is going to give you a high-level overview of your applications and what their workloads are doing, right? So potentially, if you're doing a migration, you want to know what your applications are doing today so they can figure out right sizing when you're moving on to a new array. So for example, 7 motor C dot, you want to know what the application is doing that's very critical to your business. You want to make sure that you are putting in the appropriate aggregate so that it's there's no SLA or SLO issue. Yeah, so you're profiling applications from the get-go, right? And if you are migrating those over to a different tier of storage, you can understand what those profiles are, and that way you can properly size them on the new storage. Yep, and at the very top, you can filter on a specific application if you need to as well to make sure that you are uh, profiling that workload correctly. So yeah, application by application, tenant by tenant, line of business by line of business, and so forth. Exactly. Excellent. Moving down, we can actually see it by host as well. Uh, if we were concerned about a particular host, we want to see how much has been allocated to a host uh, and what the workloads are doing. And then we can also then move on to the next report, looking at the NetApp side. So if we were, again, talking about some mode C dot migrations, we do want to know what workloads are done within a file that we're about to migrate to C dot to make sure that we do categorize these profiles correctly. And we can trend this over time too, right? So I would never want them to size my environment based on a current understanding. Exactly. I want to take a look at that over a period of time. Exactly. 30 days or so. Exactly. Now we're taking a look at the ESX versus uh, VM performance. Uh, in accordance to your ESX, what are your VMs actually doing? Uh, who are driving the most workloads? You can also see down in the second section where we're doing uh, VM IOS versus utilization, uh, as well as latency versus CPU utilization. This is looking at the peaks of each to make sure that you are seeing what kind of work they, they have been doing uh, throughout time. This is looking at the hourly performance. So again, we're going to be looking at the last 14 days um, and seeing what kind of work are being done. Uh, if you highlight those bubbles, you can individualize a particular VM and see what have been driving a lot of I.O. or what has been experiencing a lot of latency. And I think that's an important point, right? So you see this visualization, you see that bell curve on these graphs where majority of these bubbles tend to lie, mm -hmm. but then you have these outliers, right? And that's really where you should be focusing your attention. And just by simply hovering over that bubble, you can actually see what the name of the VM is, drill into it further in many of these reports you can highlight those areas and actually drill down even further. Exactly. Excellent. Moving on, we can now see the VM capacity and performance. It's very similar to the application capacity and performance, but this is taking at the virtual side. So earlier we're looking at the physical side. This is looking at the virtual. Uh, we can see how much has been allocated to data stores that are provisioned to VMDKs and how much has been used. Uh, we can then see the VMIS versus CPU utilization again, how much has been powered on, off, or idle, right? That'll open uh, up some discussions there alone, right? If we have a lot of VMs sitting there idle, what are those VMs be able to reclaim those back to the business, right? Exactly, and at the very bottom, we can see the breakdown by VM to see what has been provisioned, so maybe we could potentially reclaim these, right, Excellent. if they have been powered off, uh, which leads into the next report that shows you when they've been powered off and how long. Right, so at the very far right, you'll see a powered off since. This will tell you, according to vCenter, when these have been powered off. So you can start thinking about ones you want to reclaim. Typically, you want to reclaim the ones that have been powered off maybe a year ago. Uh, you can see how much has been allocated to those and start reclaiming them. Yeah, so that's really good. And uh, you mm -hmm. can start to think about some showback. What am I saving by bringing these things yep. in? Look at something maybe a year ago, maybe 30 days, yep. whatever. Yeah. You can also take a look at this report when you want to figure out a um, migration path. Let's say you want to take down some VMs, but you don't know what they're connected to. This will show you an end-to-end -end path from VM to store to show you a end-to-end uh, -end topology here. Excellent. Now we're going to be moving on to the fabric summary. This is looking at all your switches in your environment, how many ports they have, how many are connected, what's licensed, and what's not being used. I can see the firmware here, so when it comes to compliance details, right, I can see what, exactly. what versions they're running. Exactly, to make sure that you are up to um, the latest firmware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we deal with ITIL all the time. Exactly. Making sure that everybody's running the same build is definitely important. Exactly. 
Now we can actually move down to the host level, see what hosts are out there, uh, what they're connected to, and what uh, those HBA firmwares are as well. And same same use case, right? Exactly. We're understanding the yep. firmware of those mm -hmm. HBAs, making sure that we're in compliance. And down to the host summary, very similar again, but now we're also associating uh, capacity to these. Um, so how many paths are connected to these hosts, whether they are fiber channel or SCSI, how much has been allocated to these hosts and what's being accessed, as well as is there any evaluations associated with these hosts, whether they are missing redundancies or path hours and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So those service path violations that we actually defined in the product, they will give us a count here of how many of those have occurred against this particular host. Yep, exactly. And then now we're down to the mass but not uh, mass but not mass volumes. So we typically see customers want to see mass but not mass, but then we'll also see customers want to see the other way around, mass but not mass. Uh, these are typically cases where we are uh, decommissioning arrays. We took out the masking entries, but we've got to take out the mapping or, or so forth, right? So looking at by data center and and then showing what she has, maybe you want to start either configuring these correctly or uh, reclaiming these first if we didn't need them, sure. right? Sure, so this is gonna help us defer you know, additional capital or spending, yep. right? We, we're essentially reusing what we already had allocated out there. Maybe we, you know, as you said, decommissioned a host, mm -hmm. right? We just forgot to remove that entry and reclaim that to the business. But that's stuff we can easily get back immediately defer future spending or you know, you know, purchasing additional disk, right? Exactly. Which all leads us to. Now we're all leading back to this is chargeback to make sure we know how much is being allocated to uh, our tenants, line of business, business unit project, or applications. Now we're seeing this down by the host or VM level, seeing what tiers are allocated to those assets, and then showing you how much has been allocated to those. We can then associate, if we did have cost um, associated inside OCI, we can then tie this back to a certain cost. So you can start doing chargeback. Uh, right now, this is a showback report, but again, even though it's a chargeback, it can be used as a showback report as re represented here in this report. Uh, to avoid double counting, we are excluding ESX servers or hypervisors and including the virtual machines because you will have double counting if you included both, right? Right, if you've seen both the host capacity and the VM set, right? Exactly. So, in, in, as you mentioned, in OCI, we can easily just a, as simply in this particular report gone in there and define costs for those tiers and that mm -hmm. cost would have rolled up in a chargeback scenario. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so this moves on to vendor-specific reports, and I'll probably give a little bit of detail here. We talked about this in a previous vignette where you know, on-command insight does tend to normalize this data amongst all the different vendors of storage that we actually monitor today. And because there is no real standard in the storage industry, we had to pick a, we had to draw a line in the sand, right? So for NetApp, for example, NetApp likes the term aggregate, where other vendors may use storage pools or disk pools. We have this concept that NetApp will call flex walls, right? And to others, maybe for EMC, they may think of it as an internal volume. So we have these different terms that we use, and we tend to take all the different vendors and normalize them into these buckets. What we found is many of our customers want those terms and those terms that they are comfortable with. So NetApp people want the term aggregate. So we have a very, uh, you know, a, a a complementary set of vendor uh, specific reports mm -hmm. in those common names that people are used to, right? So uh, I'll, I'll move it on from here. We'll maybe walk, show, the, show them a couple of examples of that. Yep, so we're gonna start with the UMC side, uh, but we do also have HDS, uh, NetApP, IBM and XIBS, right? exactly. So we're gonna start with the thick side for the VMAX. This is taking a look at what has been truly allocated and what's truly used from a VMAX thick perspective. So when looking at thick provisioning, they are not looking at the used of the pool. Um, what OCI shows is we're gonna show these as 100% used. That's typically not what happens in a thick environment for VMAX. Uh, what is considered used from their perspective is what has been mapped to a particular storage port. So when you have a thick VMAX array, uh, all these ones are already pre-allocated, so that's why it looks like it's already used, correct? Mm -hmm. So they only go by the mapping entries to show what has been truly used. This is what we see under the total allocated plus bound column. So usable is typically what's usable, the array, 
free is the delta between those two, and uh, what they want to know is how much they have free. So we'll then see a breakdown by LUN, what is considered free. So looking at their mapped and mass status, uh, you'll see that these are all unmapped. So what, you know, it, if I were to summarize this up, we understand that the, the complexities of the storage. We are actually taking into consideration many of these complexities and we're providing you the new columns in this report, right? Doing, we're doing the math for you and providing you exactly what you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Show me what I have remaining or to, show me what I have free. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that across all the different <laughs> breakdown in storage. Exactly. So going back to your terminologies for um, EMC again, or, or specifically VMAX, we decided to call the, the storage pool the thin pool, and we're only showing the thin provision pools here. So when you're looking at a VMAX thin array, you'll have a huge subset of rate groups that mean absolutely nothing to a particular uh, storage admin or even their management, right? All they really care about is these thin pools. They don't care about the gatekeepers and so forth. So when we're looking at here, what they are concerned about is the subscription rate as well as the utilization rate of the array itself. So typically for a VMAX customer, they're going to provision mostly on a fiber channel pool, and then it will be completely over-provisioned. Uh, we don't see this here, but this does give you the ability to show it if you did have that kind of configuration. But what they're most concerned is the actual array level. So if they had a 400% provision uh, fiber channel pool, as long as they don't go over that 100% um, subscription rate at the array level, then they're typically okay. That's what they want to show. Okay. So moving on. We can see the different types of thin pools that we are doing, right? The EFD, the FC, the SATA, right? There could be others, obviously. Um, and we're easily showing you what the subscription uh, ratio or capacity is for that particular pool. Exactly. Now this is moving on to the net capacity by aggregate. So typically a customer would want to see this by controller or um, node. In OCI, we typically put this as an HA pair or a cluster when we're looking at the array level. So this typically doesn't fall under what they are showing under DFM, for example, right? They're looking this up by node or by controller. So this report is trying to replicate that actual report that you may see in DFM. Um, this is going to be uh, looking then at the agit level, how much has been used and how much has been committed. Committed would then be how much has been allocated to flex walls or uh, volumes in this case. And then you'll see the subscription rate or commit space uh, for each aggregate. So that's also important. We try to use some of the same terminology and naming as of the other elementary uh, element managers that you're probably familiar with that came with your storage array, right? Mm -hmm. So here is a case where we're doing the same and matching the NetApp element managers that we have here, right? Yep, exactly. Way to put it. I think that brings us to a conclusion here. Uh, Ketia, um, you know, if you have any last words about the reporting, I'll open it up to you. So again, these are just a, a couple of examples of the 27 reports that we actually have in the product. Uh, you can also take a look at some of our um, storage my dashboard reports, right? We, we didn't show that, that we'll show that later on in a different vignette, but um, these are just hopefully going to get you by to show you what we can actually do in our product and show that you uh, can actually customize these as well as create your own, hopefully. Uh, this is just to give you a flavor of what we can actually do in, inside OCI. Very good point, right? These are to pique your interest, to show you some of the capabilities and the capacities that we can provide the drill down techniques, yep. so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Ultimately, we could probably provide or send out a thousand reports and they're not gonna be exactly what you want. You're gonna to wanna to create them, reproduce the reports that you already have today in our tools, mm -hmm. right? But this does actually give you a pretty good understanding or a showcase of some of the capabilities. As you mentioned, we'll go through in a future vignette on the storage manager dashboard that has a lot of different drill down and techniques and just in that one dashboard alone uh, that, that is actually comprised of many little reports, right? So. We'll talk about that in a future episode, and we'll also go into uh, uh, later down the road of creating your own reports and walk you through some of the series there. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We we'll hope you join us again for a future On Command Insight reporting series.